All right, everybody. Uh, I got Sheldon Rankins here. Uh, really excited about Sheldon. Sheldon's a guy that, um, as you talk to people that have been around him over the years, total pros pro, locker room favorite, staff favorite, doesn't matter who you talk to, coaches, anybody he's been around and affected. Uh, unfortunately, we've played against him a number of times over the years, uh, which leads us to today. It's a guy that we've always pinpointed would be great fit for us and um, be able to really help us win a lot of games. And so uh, really excited to get Sheldon in our building. He's a great fit for, for what we're trying to do defensively as a team in the locker room. Um, so really excited. We got a lot of his former, several of his former teammates here who are very excited to have Sheldon in the building. Uh, they reached out to let me know that as quickly as they saw the news. And so um, that's all encouraging stuff. So I'll turn it over to Sheldon and let you guys have Adam. Why do you feel like Cincinnati was the best fit for you at this point in your career? Yeah. Uh, well, first I want to say uh, I appreciate the Bengals for uh, for having me, uh, want me to be a part of what's going on here, and um, I just felt like it, it culminated, you know, everything I was looking for at this point in my career. Um, you know, obviously um, stability. Uh, you know, a place that that wants me and sees me. You know, not only part of um, you know. Uh, the the next six month plan, but you know, sees me part of the future, uh, and then the team that wants to win. You know, a team that has everything, um, everything right in front of it, uh, everything in the locker room uh, from a talent perspective, from a coaching perspective, uh, to be able to push that envelope and 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 really win it all. You know, at, at this point in my career, you know, those are the things that really matter to me. Uh, you know, a place that, that that feels like home, a place that feels like um, you know, a place that, that, that truly wants me and, and, and wants to, uh, you know, display my abilities, you know, on the field, off the field, you know, as a leader, as a player, and, and then a team that's, that's, that's truly capable of, of going and win it all. You know, a few years ago, this team was in the Super Bowl, um, and we got all the makings to be able to make that kind of run again, so I'm looking forward to it. As Zach mentioned, you're reuniting to one your bases. Trey Bond, the third reaction. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, me and Trey, uh, that's my guy. So, you know, it, from I always tell people, um, you know, you, you guys have, you know, watched Trey practice and I'm sure seen him fight and, and, and do all that kind of stuff. Um, that's who he was when I met him. His, at his rookie mini camp practice, I'm pretty sure he got kicked out for fighting. Like, so that's, you know, so... Um, you know, to a degree, I was, uh, you know, unofficially Trey's Wrangler in New Orleans. So, uh, so, you know, happy to hold those reins again. Um, and, um, yeah, and, and, and Vaughn as well. You know, Vaughn was my guy, same draft class in New Orleans. So, you know, ha happy, happy to be back with those guys. You know, last time I was with those guys, we won a lot of games. So, uh, looking forward to, to, to getting back on that same wave. Um, you just never knew when it was going to happen. Uh, that's pretty much, and I'm pretty sure that that will be the, the sentiments I feel from the moment we start practicing again. Uh, it'll just be that. Only difference is now I'm a little older, so I'm like, Trey, don't make me come all the way over there, please. This is, you know. Um, but, you know, like I said, I mean, he's, you know, a, a supreme talent. So, listen, hey, if he, if he wants to fight, I'll be there. It's fine. It's fine. It's completely fine with me. Yeah, no, I just felt like I could be a, a, you know, just something that was missing. You know, I feel like, you know, what I add uh, in terms of um, leadership, in terms of being able to rush the passer, um, you know, I, I know I don't get too much credit for it, but I feel like I stopped the run pretty well. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't be a, you know, a guy that's out there all the time. So I feel like everything I can do, um, and I feel like I can do it at a at a high enough level to really push this group forward, uh, and and really be a a, a a true force for this team. You're getting older in the league. It seems like last year was your second most productive year you've ever had. What do you attribute being able to still be so good as the years kind of pile up? Um, and healthy. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I think a lot of people will kind of look at my career and, you know, 
say I had some down years, but it was also just some years that like I've just been really beat up. You know, there was some year. You know, I suffered. You know, essentially, I, I went through, you know, two Achilles surgeries in the span of you know a year. You know, and as hard as it is to get back from one of those, I had to get back from two of those as well as get better in the process. Like a lot of people don't understand how hard it is to come back from injury to get to the level you were at, but also still have to get better. So, you know, I just think, you know, being able to have good health over the last few years has really allowed me to just really attack my craft and really hone in on the on the things and, you know, that I feel like I need to do to get better to really, you know, be the dominant player I know I can be. So, uh, you know, for me, um, I feel like, you know, when I watched last year, like I, I had a really productive year, but you know, there's still so much, you know, more left for me to do, and I feel like I'm, I'm still ascending as a player. Uh, you know, just, just overall, honestly, you know, I think, you know, I'm a guy who doesn't truly focus on, you know, all the, all the things I've done well, like in, in a sense, you know, I, I, there are a lot of people that I always want to talk about, you know not to open old wounds, but, you know, the three sack game I had against Cincy or, or different things like that. And, you know, when I watched that game, I only watched the sacks I missed or I only watched the plays where I'm like, oh, if I would have done that, I would have, you know, been able to do something here. So, you know, for me, it's just about my continued growth and never never feeling like, okay, cool, I've arrived, I've made it. Um, you know, and part of my part of my journey is – it'll never allow me to feel that way. So there's always going to be room for me to grow. There's always going to be room for me to grow as a as a run defender, whether it's leverage, whether it's, you know, use of my hands or, you know, better strike or, 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 what, it, or what have you, or even in my pass rush, you know, finding ways to, you know, beat slide protections and different things like that, or just finding more efficient ways to win my one-on-ones that, you know, a lot of one-on-ones I had, they're great wins, but how can I turn those wins into, into sacks or sack fumbles instead of just pressures or hits and different things like that. So I'm always trying to figure out ways to continue to grow my game. And, you know, I, I feel like, again, you know, I'm still truly ascending and I, and I look forward to, to having a better year than I had last year. Let's do it. Uh, you want to do it? You, 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 you brought it back up, but go over here for sure. What what plays did you miss? Because it didn't seem like the us that you missed many plays. I miss I miss a few. Right. Yeah, for sure. Uh, there was um, earlier. Uh, this is before I got my first sack. There was one where they said the protection to me. I'm going to rush on Ted, and I get bumped, and I just kind of slid off of one sack on Joe. I mean, Joe's a you know a tough sack, but so I slid off of that one. There was. Um, there was another one where Joe gained like two yards on on the play, but that one should have been another sack. I got to find a way to get him down sooner. So the last sack I had on that drive, if you go back and watch the first play of that series, uh, there and uh, he's my teammate now, so I don't want to do this, but uh, whatever, fine. We're discussing old wounds, old wounds, guys, old wounds. We're on to better things, but these are the questions asked, so I'm answering the questions. Uh, <laughs> I um, I beat Kappa with the stab club. So at this point, you know, again, he's my teammate now. We're good. I'm just answering the questions. Uh, after I've been kicking his ass all day, um, I, 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 knew, I was like, I'm setting up for like to win the game. I'm like, okay, cool. I know this move's gonna kill him. Sack ball out, game over. Like in my head, I'm literally walking through this because I just, it's gonna happen. So execute the move perfectly. And Jonah at the last second, so I beat Kappa. Jonah at the last second kind of comes back and like just pushes me enough. And like, and if you go back and watch that play, I beat him clean and you see me like fall like this, you see my arm slap down like that, it's because in my mind I'm going to strip the ball, like it's happening. Like I'm going through my whole process, stab club, beat him clean, sack ball out. So I'm reaching for the ball, but I get bumped and Joe runs out, throws a ball, and Will Anderson, you know, chases him, gets a quarterback hit. So anyway, so that should have been like sack number five or whatever it should have been. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I go back and I watch 
that's I spend most of my time watching all the ones I didn't make instead of the ones I made because the ones I make I truly expect myself to make those plays. So um, I'm always just trying to find ways to get better. It's never good enough for me. Like everybody, like you know, everybody I know is super excited about the three sack game, and I was sitting on the plane or sitting on the bus thinking like. I really should have had six today. That's crazy. Like, and that's all I could think about. I couldn't be happy with the three because I knew there was some I still left out there. So for me, it's always about getting better. It's never about resting on what I've done. It's never about being satisfied with anything. And, you know, there's, you know, my family and stuff, they get, you know, pissed at me sometimes because they're like, no, just, no, you, you play good. Be happy about it. And I just can't. Like, I just, that's just not the way I'm wired. Like, maybe when I'm done playing, I can sit back and, you know, smell the roses, so to speak. But, you know, for now, I got to keep going. There's more plays to make, and I got to make them. They didn't slide to me. I don't know why. I, listen, that is the first question I asked. Zach when I met him before, before I before I before I said any hey how you doing anything else it was like and again excuse my French I speak freely guys you're gonna get used to it uh, I said why the f- didn't you slide to me and we just kind of laughed about it and you know he's you know he was like you know what man you know we probably should have we probably I'm like well I'm glad you didn't you know I even asked Ted, like, I think it was like midway through the game. I was like, y'all, just what y'all, this is the game plan. Cool. I'm not going to ask again. I don't want, I'm not going to make y'all overthink it. That's what y'all want to do. Let's do it. You know, uh, you know, me and Cap have had some battles for years. He was in Tampa when I was in New Orleans. So, like, you know, just there's some familiarity there. So, um, but yeah, no, listen, I was uh, very pleased with Coach Zach Taylor's decision to leave me one on one all day. It made for a great Sunday. Made for a great Sunday in Cincinnati, for sure. We also had some pretty good, we had some other games too in this. Absolutely, absolutely. Last year, even the year before, when I was with the Jets, I think I had like eight tackles in a sack again. Yeah, I mean, so listen, I think uh, even the year before, I had the game winning sack again. You know, listen, a, I'm, a, I'm kind of a football junkie. You know, my memory's got a pretty good memory. I mean, even 2018, I had a sack against Clint Bowling. I mean, listen, there's, you know, Andy Dawn was at quarterback. I mean, listen, I, <laughs> you know, who they has been kind to me. Whether they've meant to be or not, whether they've meant to be or not, they've been really kind to me. So I appreciate it. And now they're kind to me now, so I appreciate it. For sure. yeah, this isn't the first offseason they pursued you. There yeah. Previous years where you thought you might end up here at any point? Yeah, when I went to the Jets, uh, I thought it might have been here. Uh, you know, obviously we just couldn't get it to work out. But yeah, no, I mean this isn't the it's in the first time they pick up the phone and and requested my services, and you know this time it was able to work out. So uh, you know their persistence paid off. You know it's like the you know the girl you know like hey I'm gonna just be your friend for now and then. You know, maybe one day she'll like, look at me like, you know what, he's kind of cute. You know, and, you know, they, they, they were persistent. And, you know, you know what, let's give this a shot. And then here we are. I mean, I think there was maybe a thought that you would be back in Houston. Were you surprised at how aggressive the Bengals ended up being continuing to come after you this year? Yeah, yeah, honestly. Uh, you know, I think, um, you know, as a true fan of the game, uh, I thought, you know, truthfully, one, I, I honestly just thought, I thought DJ would be back, you know, I'm just speaking honestly. Uh, I thought DJ would be back. I mean, he's been a hell of a player here. Um, so, you know, in my mind as a as a person who, again, watches D-line play, I'm like, oh, they don't they don't need me. Like, I just, it, again, it just made sense. So, uh, you know, once, uh, once they, you know, again, you know, made their approach and, you know, um, it, it pretty much went there. It went. It went really fast. You know, once I, once uh, once they reached out and you know and and were adamant about you know what they saw me as in this defense and, and what I could bring and it all made sense. You know, it all made sense. And you know, I'm I'm, I'm glad to be here and I'm I'm you know hoping with, you know with the way I work and the way I go about my business, I can be everything they you know they envision me being here. Something on that note. I'm sorry. On that note, I mean. 
what can you be here? I mean, how much of DJ's role can you assume? Many people think of you probably, like you said, more of a pastor. Right. Do you feel like you could assume if you needed to? Right. Listen, I think I think I can do everything at a high level. Um, you know, if you go back, you know, to my last year with the Jets, uh, coming off of that year, people question, could I rush the passer anymore? Everybody was like, oh, he's a run guy now. Like, that's what he is. He's a run guy. Like, you go back, and I mean, with, you know, the Jets, my last year there, when I was on the field, we gave up 3.8 yards of carry. And, you know, going to Houston, um, we became the, you know, number six run defense in the league or something like that, you know, with me playing a lot of snaps, you know, of, of run defense. So, you know, I think um, – I think I do it all at a high level. You know, I think, uh, you know, I think you don't get this far in the league or you don't, you know, get the opportunities I've, I've had to, to be a guy. And again, like the Jets didn't have to play me on first, second down. They could have went out and got a big body and, you know, did all that. But, you know, I, I feel like it's, you know, I play football really well. I don't just rush the passer really well. Like I play, you want to line up in, 21 personnel, run power, cool, it's fine, let's do it. If you want to spread it out and throw the ball over the park, just don't leave me by myself all day. It's going to get ugly. So, like, you know, I feel like I do it all really well at a high level. So, you know, I look forward to continuing that trend, you know, and, and continue to do that the rest of my career. Is there something specifically about negotiations this time? I know money's a little bit different. Yeah, it's a little bit different. A little bit different. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to just say it made sense this time. Let's just, let's just leave it at that. Look, I mean, at, at the end of the day, uh, you know, to, to just speak honestly, um, like most people assume, most people assumed I wouldn't leave Houston. That everybody assumed, you know, with the year I had and, you know, everything, you know, Houston had coming back, everybody assumed I would be back there. And, uh, you know, for whatever reasons, it didn't work out. So, you know, once I started, uh, you know, looking elsewhere and having those conversations, um, nothing made more sense than than here. You know, whether it's money, whether it's fit, whether it's um, everything culminating into um, placing myself in a good situation on a good football team with you know with the right people leading it. Um, it all made sense. You know, this is this is the perfect spot for me right now in my career, and you know that's why I'm here. Interior pass rush is hard to find and very valuable. What do you think the correlation is between the teams that have it and when? Um, I just think the way this, this league is now, there's not a lot of quarterbacks who stand 12 yards deep in the pocket. You know, most guys, you know, are, are dropping back to nine, stepping up to seven or six. Uh, you know, so if you have guys who can, you know, disrupt the middle, you know, if you ask a lot of quarterbacks, you know, they don't like their feet getting stepped on. You know, they don't like, you know, when they follow through guys' helmets being in the way. So, um, if you got a guy who can, you know, um, and again, guys, I speak freely. So, just if you got a guy who can just be a dick of a person, you know, you know to, to the annoyance of a quarterback, you know, in the middle all game long. Uh, it doesn't even have to, again, it doesn't even have to be hits. It's just, again, if he's constantly having to, you know, take one hand off the ball to, to you know, push an O-lineman, you know, away this way to get his feet out of the way, I mean, that's just throws off timing, throws off rhythm, uh, and he's human. Like, at some point it gets annoying. You start thinking about it. You know, it's just, you know, it, it you know, all that little stuff adds up over, you know, over the course of four quarters and, you know, being able to, uh you know, wreak havoc. So uh, if you got a guy who can do that, and I like to feel I can do that, um, then yeah, like I, I think it matters in the sense of, especially if you've got good edge rushers, which we have here, um, it allows everybody else to 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 kind of eat. It, it, it unlocks the key, so to speak. You know, when you got that pressure up the middle and that, that constant force pushing the pocket and, and being disruptive, uh, it allows everybody else to eat. It allows guys to play coverage on the back end. Uh, allows guys to to be able to jump things on the back end. Now now you're playing uh, 
faster because quarterbacks got to get the ball out faster. So now you're playing on that. Now you can play with more vision and different things like that. It all works hand in hand. So, you know, um, you know, just being able to to be that guy that um, can cause that disruption, cause that you know that force in the middle. Um, you know, I take pride in being that kind of guy. As a football junkie, what is it that stood out as enticing about the letter of most defensive scheme? Yeah, so um, you know the 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 first connection I have to it is Trey, you know, right? I think you know uh, I watched Trey work his ass off in New Orleans, you know, to get everything he he deserves, and you know to watch him come here and just continue to truly blossom, you know, uh, and then you know again watching you know other guys you know play well in this system. I mean, it just looks like you know guys play free. You know, and, and they play for each other. Everybody's on the same page. They play with that passion. You play with that, you know, fiery intensity. Um, you know, and when you watch it, you know, there, there's this adage in the in the in the coaching world of, or just football world in general, where, um, you know, how loud can the silent tape be? You know, right where you're watching the 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 all twenty two, and um, there's no sound, there's no commentators, nothing. But like, but can the but but can your presence on that tape be loud? And when you watch this defense, and when you watch those guys fly around, you watch how they play football. It's loud, you know. So uh, being able to insert myself into that um, and understanding what I feel like I bring, um, you know, I felt like it was a match made in heaven.